going everywhere and how our body just kind of throws its hands up, okay? Um, our, for lack of a better term, I'm just going to call them hunter-gatherer. I'm not necessarily meaning cave people. I'm just meaning anybody prior to probably 1900, right? Uh, they only ate seasonal food. We didn't have ways, you know, the refrigeration, the preservation. I don't know if they did greenhouses and stuff. I literally, that would be an interesting you know, a little study to do, but typically they ate what was in season. They ate what was around. There were times where food was scarce and there was times where food was plenty, right? You know, if my boys went out and, and shot a big deer, you know, I'm sure we'd eat fat and happy for a few days or a week off of that. Right. Um, and so, uh, during those times, our bodies are designed to function. What about scarcity? What about when the hunt's not good? Our bodies are actually designed to, instead of choosing the fat from the deer, for example, it's actually designed that it can go to sugar. It can go to sugar. Well, we have, through our modernization of our agriculture and through just a culture that has really been hell-bent on using what it produces, we become carb burners, sugar burners. And if you don't think you are, I'm going to talk about a little bit, even with a health-minded um, mom, um, how we ate growing up. Um, spaghetti, French bread with a little bit of meat, maybe in the spaghetti sauce and salad with some croutons. Of course, maybe a little bit of Hidden Valley Ranch or something on that, right? How about tacos? Of course, in a tortilla. How about some rice, beans, maybe some tortilla chips? Are you hearing all of the carbs and all of the sugar that I'm <laughs> seeing myself? How about stir-fried rice, right? Chow mein, a little bit of broccoli beef. Follow that up with a little fortune cookie or the good old American standby. Hamburger, of course, with a bun, fries, a little slice of apple pie, big thing of corn on the cob. How many of us enjoyed those things on 4th of July? I got to say, not me. I didn't have any, any of those things on 4th of July. We have become a carbohydrate or a sugar culture. We have made poisons our treats. Um, let me tell you a little bit about a carb burner or carb culture person. They need to eat about every two to three hours because sugar burns fast and hot like pine needles. I'm a mountain girl. We know what burns, right? We want some oak, maybe some elderberry, some walnut. We want something when we go to bed at night, when we put it in the wood burning stove, when we open it up in the morning, not only did it keep the house warm and constant, but there's some embers in there to work with until we load the next fire. If I were to put pine in there or some pine needles, the house is going to get cold. It's, gonna, it's, it's not going to be nice and pleasurable to wake up in the morning. It's going to be miserable. And so um, when you're a car burner, you're eating every two to three hours. That's like getting up and putting more pine needles or pine on top of that fire. You become a little food obsessive. You're always thinking about where your next meal is. I'm not judging. I lived this for many, many years. Car burners store fat rather than burn it for energy. Bummer. They not only store it in fat stores that you see on the butt and thighs and bellies and <laughs> chins, right, and backs of arms and everything, but they also store it in the arteries um, in their heart, which is a cholesterol issue. We talk, talk about HDL, the good guys, LDL, for lack of argument, I'm going to call them the bad guys, but we know it's more than that. And that's another episode. I promise I will give you that information. But what you need to know is that uh, when you're a car burner, you're storing fat rather than burning it for energy. Okay. And you don't have energy for very long. Um, it also makes you want to eat more and more sugar. It, it, so if you wake up in the morning and you started out with fresh fruit, even organic and even still cut organic oatmeal, your body is going to ask for more of that sugar because it wants it fast. Now, what happens when we get that sugar? Our blood sugar is then going to spike. We're going to have a lot of literal sugar in our blood and then it is going to crash. We're going to feel great and then we're going to feel crappy. In my family, we called it being getting weird. Oh, I feel weird. We start to get lethargic. You're not thinking as well. Maybe we get a headache. Uh, we definitely feel kind of clammy. Then we don't want to eat at all. Well, once again, we have intelligently designed bodies. We have an adrenal system. My body's being stressed out because I'm in a sugar dump. I'm crashing. Boom, cortisol levels, a stress hormone fills the gap surges in. Oh, I'm feeling better. That's not what cortisol is for. 
Cortisol is for like when my grandson like trips in the pool and I need to react real quick. It's for short term. Now, what happens if you have a daily history of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and your adrenals are just getting tapped and your pancreas is just getting tapped because every time you put that sugar in your blood, it has to pump out the insulin to break that sugar down so you don't die from having too much sugar in your blood. This snowballs. Insulin resistance is one of the uh, most dangerous snowballs. That's when your body no longer responds to the insulin that your pancreas is making. You become, we declare you diabetic, and now we have to give you synthetic forms of insulin. We're going to just pump in more of that to cover it up. Just a bigger blanket for the fire. That's it. But we did not put the fire out because most diabetics are still consuming carbohydrates. The American Diabetic Association still has them consuming massive amounts of carbs. I am disgusted by this information. So, hence the reason for the podcasting. Deep breath, okay? Um, So, where was I? Oh, I was talking about, you know, insulin, of course. Okay, and our adrenals being tapped. What happens when we have this going on? chronically, which just means all the time, our bodies become stressed. Now our cortisol levels are high all the time. We're not sleeping at night. We're moody. We're just not feeling good. We have food cravings. We're tired. We're not sleeping and we're not getting true energy. I talked briefly about leaky gut, the food that we are are eating, even if it is nourishing on a small scale, we're not able to properly digest it and utilize it. Now we're starting to develop allergies with food like crazy. I'll tell you my story in a little bit. And environmental allergies. People are getting shots left and right. Okay, ladies, emotional well-being, gone. Balance, mood swings, up and down, up and down. And I'm not even talking about the vanity stuff we see in the mirror and the youth-obsessed culture that we're in that we constantly... I I look at my daughter-in-laws. They are beautiful and they are tiny. And I have to remind myself... And I only weigh... I'm five feet tall. I weigh 120 pounds. I have to remind myself, I am not 24. (laughs) You know, kind of a thing. If I'm not properly fueled, I would tank here emotionally and probably be um, depressed. We start to become overweight in our carb culture. We see it. We are fat. I can spot the Americans all over when I travel outside of the country. We have thyroid conditions like people are passing out thyroid medication like crazy. We have female um, issues with our hormones, uteruses and ovaries, issues, 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 people having losing babies, having problems getting pregnant. We have the metabolic conditions that I was talking about with diabetes. We have so many children born with diabetes now. The type 1ers. Absolutely amazing. Autoimmune, like myself, fibro, that's just one. Chronic illness, little reminder, one in two people. One in two people. Well, you and I are talking right now. I'm one. How about you? Social issues. Well, it goes back to the depression and the anxiety, feeling victimized. I don't even know how, or I don't know how to eat, nor I can't afford this or that or whatever. It really starts to play with you. You can do this. You can eat healthy. You don't have to be Oprah and have your private chef to eat healthy. And that's what I am here for. When you're feeling these things, let me just tell you socially or in the community, you're not full of grace and wanting to serve and help others. You're sitting on your couch. You're on your phone. You're buying more crap. You're looking for a pill for every ill. I can't sleep. I'm desperate. Give me a sleep pill. I don't have any libido. I'm desperate. Give me something for that. Or, you know, a man that can, you know, no longer get it up or, you know, whatever. My moods are bad. Can I have a pill for that? I have tummy issues. I have acid reflux. Oh my gosh. I just, you know, every time I turn around, I'm getting injured and I feel so weak. I can't focus. We talked about fertility, blood pressure is high, insulin resistance, losing hair, yellow toenails. Do I need to go on? Come on, depression and anxiety? No wonder. That leads me to finally circadian rhythm. We've lost our rhythm with our earth and our connection. Um, We don't want to be out in it. It always restores me. It always restores me. 
Um, my middle son and I, we joke and say we get high elevation anxiety, meaning <laughs> get us up into the high elevation. We need trees. We need streams. We need rocks. We need dirt. We need to get back in it. And camping takes away the artificial quality of modern life. Sun up, you're awake. <laughs> Sun down, you don't really sit by the fire too long and you get real real tired real quick and you're back in bed. When we're carb dependent and we have all these hormone issues and blood sugar issues, we completely lose that space. Fat adapted culture, welcome to my world. Here we go. Properly regulated hormones and blood sugars. Little side note, I'm in perimenopause. I'm expecting a gradual process through menopause because my hormones are regulated and I am a clean, good, healthy eater. I burn fat. My metabolism works amazing. I can have that little small one ounce pour, two ounce pour of wine and it doesn't send me into throws for a week or put three pounds on me, right? Um, you have a better functioning immune system that can fight the, uh, fight off disease or irritants that you're getting environmentally or that you're consuming, right? Boundless energy. I get up, the alarm goes off at 3.45. We're out of bed, my husband and I, by 4, 4.15. I feel great. Sharp, mental, focused. I love to learn. I love to share. Great sleep. I don't even remember sleep and I don't get up to go pee three times. It's actually restorative, right? Increased libido, got to have fun. Been married for almost 30 years, got to have fun. It's great for our relationship. Sorry for my boys who are listening. I know my girls are laughing right now. <laughs> Anyways, the seasonal change, changes, like I mentioned, are gradual. The regular life changes, I'm expecting to be gradual. And for fat burners, they typically are. And a positive attitude and productive days contributing to my community, being excited that I was just invited to speak at a Native American women's conference. I'm ready. I want to do it. You know why I want to do it? Because I have been empowered and I'm living out my passion. And when you have proper fuel, that's what you get to do. You get to live out your passion and hopefully that involves serving others. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. Okay, so what can you enjoy? What can you do? Here you go. I'm going to break it down really, really simple, and we'll go over in more detail in later episodes. Eat whole foods. It's close to God made it. Eat nutrient-dense foods. Shop your local farmer's markets. Try and eat in season. Supplements, they're really good for you. Uh, We're not... Our food is not as nutritious as it used to be 100, 200 years ago. We've downgraded our food quality because we have downgraded our soil quality. Another episode. But the things that I like to take definitely are really, really good multivitamin uh, for a woman. And then uh, I take D3. I know by blood work that I'm low on D3. I also do my omega-3s, my super C's for my immune system, magnesium, water. I have a, um, a, you know, CoQ10 and a whole list of other ones that are specific for me. But I want you to go down to your health food store, let them hook you up on some good quality vitamins. Healthy fats, eat them, enjoy them should be the biggest part of your eating is is healthy fats, avocado, olive oil, olives, nuts, and seeds, and their derivative butters, excluding peanut, which is technically a legume, coconut products, and their oils and butters, grass-fed organic meats and veggies. If your pocketbook is is an issue, then look at the, the Dirty Dozen. I think it's the Environmental Working Group that has a really good list. Using companies like Butcher, Butcher Box to get your meat is absolutely great. Go for the non-GMO foods. Drink tons and tons of water, two to three liters of water a day. Go grass-fed dairy if you do dairy. Little side note, dairy usually has about 60 other hormones in it. If you're having hormone issues, I would uh, skip on the dairy, if not forever, for at least a little while. If you're buying prepackaged foods, like we all do, we have convenient foods, turn that sucker over and try and see if it can be four ingredients or less. We're looking for the least amount of processing. When I do buy prepackaged foods, like my husband loves crackers, we buy an almond flour cracker from Simple Meals. I use Thrive Market, T H 
R-I-V-E. You get savings your first time. It's absolutely awesome. Try to go for some foods. So get some fermented foods in your in your diet like olives and sauerkraut. Be sure that they don't 